All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about some budget duck decoys. I know that everyone can't afford AVNX decoys or top of the line green headgear pro grade decoys, so I wanted to make sure I hit some budget decoys for you. So today we're going to be looking at the green headgear hot buy series. So just like the name suggests, these are meant to be a hot buy or good buy, a good value decoy that doesn't break the bank. And these are going to be the cheapest per dozen decoy that green headgear sells and it's available in three different options you have the um, just regular hot buy which i have here you also have the hot buy standard and then the hot buy magnum decoys so the difference between the three options is going to be the size the head position and then the price with the regular hot buys they are 15 inches from the front seam to the back seam and then the standard hot buys are 16 inches, so just a little bit bigger, and then the magnums are 18 inches. And just for a size comparison, 18 inches is the same size as the Green Headgear Pro Grade, which is right here. So as you can see, quite a big difference. And then also in the head position, you get the rester head position in the cheaper hot buys, and then in the standard in the magnum, you get a little bit more of an active pose. And then the pricing difference is going to be, you get a dozen of these for $59.99. And then if you want to bump up to the standard, which is just a little bit bigger, is going to be $69.99 for a dozen. And then if you want the magnums, those are sold in six packs and they are $49.99. So just to compare the size between the hot buys and another budget decoy, I have a hardcore decoy right here, and then I have the green headgear hot buy, and these are different by about two inches. I believe this one is 13, almost 14 inches from the front seam to the back seam, and then like I said, the hot buys are 15 inches. Like I said, with these hot buys, you get one head position. All of the decoys are gonna be this rester head position, and then you're gonna get six drakes and six hens. All right, so as far as the looks of the decoy, I think these look pretty realistic. You obviously don't get the same um, level of detail in the molding. There's not quite as much variance in the color on the head. It's more of just a solid green with a little bit of kind of metallic, and then there's a little bit of blue on the back side of the head. Not as much detailing in the feathers. Um, you do still get the curls on the back of it, but not as much shape in the actual tail. Um, and that's compared to like a green headgear pro grade like this one. Much more detail in the head, um, and then the overall paint scheme, and then the actual contour of the tail. And now looking at the hen again, pretty good looking decoy. Um, fairly realistic, not as realistic as the pro grade that has more detailing in the head and things like that and again more detailing on the tail but overall not a bad looking decoy for the budget price and in my opinion the hot buys are one of the better looking budget decoys whenever you compare it to like this hardcore or some flambeaux i don't have any of those with me um, to me they look quite a bit better i mean you guys can be the judge and tell me what you think. I think that the hardcores and the flambeaux have a really, really orange color to the decoy. Um, obviously the bill is very, very orange compared to on the hot buys. Um, let me know what you think, but I personally think that the hot buys are a better looking budget decoy. One area that's lacking on these decoys is gonna be the keel. Um, it's a very basic keel. It is weighted, but um, you only get one spot to tie your line. You can't um, change which direction the decoys are facing by tying it on the back, things like that. Also, the um, plastic that connects the keel to the actual decoy is very thin. I don't know if you can see that. There is some flex there, um, and I am kind of worried about them breaking at some point. I haven't had any issues with them breaking yet. The only real issue I've had is with the hole for the line. We had these Texas rigged last year and we were kind of throwing them around and just trying to see how far we could throw them. And it ended up, um, the Texas rig ripped through one of the holes and I lost that Texas rig. And now I need to try and figure out if I can fix the decoy. 
These decoys are also really, really light because of that smaller keel and because the decoy is overall smaller and the plastic is thinner. These decoys are quite a bit lighter than other decoys and you should be able to get away with throwing three ounce weights on them. That's what I'm going to be doing this year. So if you're a walk-in hunter, these are going to be a great option being lighter like that. So just like with the looks, the quality of these decoys fall somewhere between those higher end decoys and then somewhere above the lower end decoys, at least in my opinion. Um, the plastic to me feels thicker than on the hardcore decoy. When you tap around on the hardcore decoy, it just has a really hollow, cheap sound to it. With these, they just the plastic feels like it's a little bit thicker and more quality made. And then with the paint job, the way they've held up over a year is there's some small chipping and loss of paint. I tried to find the worst one I could find to show you guys. Um, the bill has a little bit of wear. And all these are really high wear areas, especially whenever you're Texas rigging these. Again, on the head and then on the tail. Um, but overall, the paint that's chipping here, it's nothing that's going to prevent me from throwing these out in a spread next year. Overall, I think these are a great budget decoy if you're just getting started with duck hunting or if you're looking to increase the size of your spread and you're on a budget, then this is a good option. If you're a new guy just starting out, buy you one, two dozen of these and then as you continue hunting and you feel like you want to invest in some nicer looking decoys, you can buy a dozen or two dozen nicer decoys later on and then continue using these as fill-in to make your spread look bigger. I also really like to use these whenever it gets really cold and the water ice is over um, like we had earlier in the year when we broke open a hole in the ice. These look really good because what those ducks are doing on the water is huddling up, putting their head down, just trying to stay warm. And that's what this position mimics. So I really like to use a lot of these during that time. I do wish the keel on these decoys were a little bit better. Like I was saying earlier, there's not a whole lot of options with them, but you kind of sacrifice those options for having a little bit higher quality decoy overall. Um, so it's kind of up to you whether you think that you want to have a cheaper decoy with a few more keel options or a um, little bit higher quality decoy with a pretty basic keel. All right, so that's all I have for you guys on this video. If you guys liked the video or if it helped you out any, please leave it a like. And if you have any questions about these decoys, leave them in the comments below. Also, let me know what budget decoys you're using and if you've used them and hot buys, let me know which ones you prefer. Um, and make sure you guys subscribe because I will be having more videos like this in the future. And we'll also be doing some hunting videos later this year. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys.